Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar and today I want to show you five simple shapes that will help you create world-class bass lines. I'll catch you in the lesson. So the great thing about learning the bass guitar is it's a shape or a pattern orientated instrument. And this makes it considerably simpler compared to instruments such as the piano where these shapes and patterns just simply don't exist so much. So the most important thing when you're just starting out learning the bass guitar is to get super familiar with these shapes. And I believe the best way to do that is to always relate them to either a song or a specific style of music. So I'm gonna take you through these five shapes today. But first off, I would love to know what's your biggest challenge learning the fretboard? Please do let me know in the comments below. So the first and most important shape that you need to know is the octave shape. So let me demonstrate how this works. So let's take an E at the seventh fret. And what we can do is we can play the octave E at the ninth fret on the G string like that. And so what you're gonna see is there's a very distinctive pattern here which is created on the neck. So it looks like an L shape. So what it is, is it's two strings down and then two frets along like that. You can either play the octave with your third finger or your fourth finger, I don't mind, it's completely optional, but the most critical thing is to appreciate that L shape. Now, the first of the three songs that I always teach my students when they're looking to hear what the octave sounds like is Give Me Some Loving from the Spencer Davis group, which has this distinctive bass riff. And that is a classic octave sound. And the thing about the octave, to use it, you need no musical theory. So say if the chord is an E, all you need to do is put the E roots note down, and the next note that you can start to use is the octave straight away. So it's a very simple note to get going with. So the second tune that I show students to demonstrate the sound of the octave is My Sharona by The Knack. So it sounds like this. And then it changes here. But that sort of first bar and a half is classic octave sound. So make sure you go back and check that out. And then the third song I always show them is Master Blaster by Stevie Wonder. So you can hear this sound going on. So really listen to those octaves going on in the bass line and check out those three tracks so you can get that sound in your head. So the next most important shape to know is the root and the fifth. So let me demonstrate how this works. So what we want to do is we want to take our root note and then we want to go up five notes of the scale. So we want to go one, two, three, four, five, like that. And what this does is this gives us another little L shape again. So we were working in the key of E from before, so we go from an E up to a B there. And can you see it's one string down and two frets along like that. And this is a shape that we can now move all over the fingerboard like so. And the fifth is really our next most important note that we want to chart integrating into our bass lines. Again, it needs very, very little music theory to integrate it into the bass lines. So a couple of songs which use this straight away that I show my students all the time is Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, that iconic intro that is the root and the fifth. So make sure you check that out. And then the other tune that I show them from the same era is My Girl from The Temptations. This is in the key of C this time. So make sure you check out those two tunes. But also the fifth is used a ton in country music, for instance. 
jazz, Latin music. This note really is used so much, so it's really worth getting to know that shape. But there's one more shape that I want to show you, which is closely associated with this. And this is the root, the fifth, and the octave. So let me do that. Let's do it, say, in the key of G. So we're going to have G, and then we're going to have the D there, which is our fifth. And then we have the octave there. So we have this very distinctive shape that we can get like that. And the bass line that I always show students which uses this is Hotel California, it uses this shape. So let me demonstrate. So you can clearly see the root, the fifth, and the octave pattern working together there. These are the kind of the three notes if you don't want to get concerned with music theory and just want to experiment with, with other notes which will work with a vast majority of chords in pop and rock songs. These are the three notes to choose. So shape number three is the major triad. So whenever you see a major chord written down, this is the go-to shape that I would recommend. Again, we'll play it in E here. So the shape is based on the major scale. And what we do is we play the first and the third and the fifth notes of that scale. So if we've got the scale pattern, like so, the first five notes, we take the root, we take the third note, and we take the fifth note here. And the fingering that I suggest using is the second finger, the first finger, and the fourth finger, and that will fall directly under the hand. If you need any help with the music theory here, make sure you head over to eBay's Guitar and check out the Basslab Plus membership, because the Basslab Plus has a course called the Ultimate Music Theory Bootcamp, which will teach you music theory directly related to the bass guitar, right from the ground upwards, and teach you absolutely everything you need to know for beginner to intermediate bass players about how music theory works. So shape number four is the minor triad. But first off, if you're enjoying this lesson, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we release a lesson like this every single week here at eBass Guitar. So hit the red subscribe button, which is somewhere around this video, and you'll be the first to know when it's released. So the minor triad is the go-to shape for whenever you see a minor chord. So the notes of the minor triad in the key of E will be an E a G and a B like this. And this is the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of the minor scale. And this will perfectly outline the minor chord. So the fingering I suggest you use for this is the first finger on the G, the fourth finger, sorry, the first finger on the E, the fourth finger on the G, and the third finger on the B. Now we have a shape that we can move around all over the neck. So just move it down a tone to play over a D chord, down another tone to play over a C chord. And this will cover most eventualities whenever you see a minor chord when you're just starting out. So there are two songs that I recommend to get the sound of the minor uh, triad in your head. And the first one is Badge by Cream. The first three notes of that. So this is in the key of A, and the first three notes sound like this. Actually, the first four notes even. And then it goes to a D chord. But those first three notes, or four notes even, perfectly highlight the A minor chord which is going on in the rest of the band. So make sure you check that one out. Then the second tune that I recommend you check out is Beat It by Michael Jackson. This is the... So make sure you check out those first three notes, that is, like that, because that perfectly highlights the minor triad. Then it jumps up the octave. And then the rest of the notes of the riff happen there. But the critical ones to check out are those first three notes. But also the style I recommend also checking out is some ska music too. So make sure you check out bass lines that sound like this.
So the major triad you'll also find extensively used in rock and roll music and over 12 bar blueses too. So make sure whenever you're listening to rock and roll songs, you list out and out for bass lines which sound like this. Now the fifth shape which creates world-class bass lines is what we call the box shape. And it's kind of an extension of the root fifth octave idea that we talked through earlier, but this is used so, so much. So let me show you again in the key of E. And what this is based off a scale called the minor pentatonic scale. So if you need any help with that, make sure you check out our free bass players action pack because that will give you all of the basic scales that you need to know as a bass player. So the minor pentatonic is simply the E, the G, the A, the B, the D, and the E like that. And it has this fingering one, four, one, three, one, three, like that. But often the third note can be missed out sometimes. So we end up with this shape here going under. And it looks like a box, the shape that it creates on the neck. And this creates literally loads and loads of bass lines. So the first one that I always show my bass lines, is, my students even, is Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi, which sounds like this. So slow it down. that box shape falling under the hands there. So the other two bass lines that I show my students to demonstrate this box shape is the old rock and roll classic, Shaking All Over, which sounds like this. Which is the root, up to the octave, the flattened seventh, and the fifth there, like so. Two notes on each one. Now the last tune is a tune I've literally played hundreds and if not thousands of times over the years, which is Play That Funky Music by Wild Cherry, which sounds like this. And as with anything, all of these shapes are completely movable across the neck. So I was playing it in E there, but all you have to do is say, shift it up three notes and you can play it in G. This is why learning these five shapes are so, so powerful. So guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed this lesson and want to learn more about the fingerboard, I've got another video I would love you to check out. It's called How to Learn the Neck Using Pentatonics. So make sure you check that out. It's really simple, really straightforward, and there's a link in the description below. Also, if you want to kickstart your bass playing today, make sure you grab our free bass players action pack, which will show you all of the most important skills that beginner to intermediate, intermediate bass players need to jump start their bass playing. There's a link in the description below and of course it's completely free. So make sure you check that out. Cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com. I'll catch you next week.